Her mixed parentage, coupled with an unconventional upbringing, gave her very interesting and transforming life experiences, all of which she poured into her music career. She had great success for several years before taking a hiatus that would end up lasting nearly two decades. Let's find out what happened to Swedish singer-songwriter Nena Cherry. Nena Marian Carlson, better known as Nena Cherry, was born in Stockholm, Sweden to a Swedish mother and a father from the West African nation of Sierra Leone. Her parents separated early on and her mother went on to marry American jazz trumpeter Don Cherry. He has always played a more prominent role both in her life and her musical narrative. However, she has said that her biological father, whom she met when she was around eight years old, also had a major impact. She would end up adopting her stepfather's surname. She grew up in a very musical family, and through both of her parents remarrying, Nena gained step-siblings and half-siblings that would all pursue some sort of musical career, including singer and stage performer Eagle Eye Cherry. In the late 60s, when Nena was just a toddler, the family ventured to the United States. They would alternate back and forth between New York City and Stockholm for a while. Later, they would move to Vermont when her stepfather landed a teaching job at Dartmouth College. Some of her earliest memories of music was playing on the swings in her childhood home while listening to the Jackson 5 and Sly and the Family Stone. Her stepfather being who he was naturally brought a lot of music into Nena's life. She has fond memories as a child being in the presence of many famous musicians such as Miles Davis. After dropping out of school at the age of 14, she went on tour with her stepfather and was introduced to the punk scene. While on the road, she became good friends with Aria, the singer from British punk rock band The Slits. She eventually moved to London, where she began finding her voice in the city's emerging post-punk, reggae, and hip-hop scenes. She even lived with Ari for a time after taking her up on her offer to join the band. Another reason why she felt it was time to separate herself from her homeland had to do with her alienation from a country that wasn't as progressive or open-minded as it is now. Culturally, when I was growing up, Sweden was a very different place, and I felt like I stood out like a sore thumb. While living in London, Nena would move through several bands over time, including New Age Steppers and Rip Rig and Panic. She also occasionally DJed on Britain's first black music pirate radio station. The following year, Nena entered a very brief marriage with Rip Rig and Panic drummer Bruce Smith, and at 18, had their only child, a daughter. Not too long after that, Nena would meet producer Cameron McVeigh. They would marry several years later and have two daughters together both of which would go on to have their own careers in music. Eventually, Nena would sign a deal with Virgin Records. Her debut solo single, Buffalo Stance, was released in November 1988 and peaked at number three on the UK singles chart, as well as the US Billboard Hot 100, and captured the number one spot on the US dance chart. We always hang in a buffalo stance. We do the down in the town we dance. I give you love, baby, now. Her debut album, Raw Like Sushi, dropped in June the following year. During the promotion of the album, Nena would find herself pregnant with her second child. She then caused an uproar in the press when she performed her hit single on British music chart television program, Top of the Pops, with her seven months pregnant belly on full display. Several more singles off the album, including Man Child, Kisses on the Wind, Heart, and Inner City Mama, also received global attention. Nena was nominated for a Grammy Award the following year in the Best New Artist category. She would unfortunately lose to Millie Vanilli, who later had the award revoked when it was discovered that they hadn't performed on their recording. Even though things were going very well for Nena, there was still somewhat of a dark cloud looming over her and her artistry. The American music industry specifically didn't really know how to place her. She was too black for white spaces and too white for black spaces. She found it to be absurd, but she understood given how segregated the country is, coupled with her own personal experiences. When Raw Like Sushi came out in the US, I wasn't considered to be black enough. They didn't really know where to put me. The music wasn't black black sounding. It wasn't R&B, it wasn't straight up hip hop, although obviously in that dimension and world. 
Her second studio album, 1992's Homebrew, wasn't as commercially successful as her debut. She did, however, gain some attention with the tracks Buddy X and Trout. In fact, a remix of the former, with the notorious B.I.G., received considerable recognition. Four years later, her third album, titled Man, was released. The lead track, called Woman, is Nena's take on James Brown's 1996 track, It's a Man's 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 World. The album also included the worldwide hit single, Seven Seconds, featuring Senegalese singer-songwriter, Yusu Nudur. Shockingly, the song just barely creeped onto the Hot 100, but blew up around the world, taking the number one spot in several countries. The song would earn Nene her second Grammy nomination, as well as an MTV Europe Music Award for Best Song. Then, Nena would disappear from the spotlight for many years. In later interviews, she would admit that being a pop star was very restricting for her, so she felt, after her third album, that it was time to take a step away from that world. During this time, she took a bit of a break and then went back into the studio and recorded an album's worth of material that never ended up getting released. Her time was also greatly occupied raising her three daughters. In 2006, she formed a new band called Circus with her husband. The group released two albums over the next three years. Several years after that, she collaborated with Norwegian Swedish jazz trio The Thing and released the record The Cherry Thing. She said that she was inspired to create the album by her stepfather's work. Then, finally, her first album in 18 years, Blank Project, was released in 2014. Her most stripped down statement yet was deeply influenced by the death of her mother back in 2009. It's about blue and black and red and love and hate. Maybe the things in life that we like to think we can control, but we can't. Friends and neighbors who know me feel that it's a very personal record. I don't think I went out of my way to spill my guts, but I was coming out of a pretty profound place because my mother had died and I was trying to figure out how to laugh and cry again and how to hold the black side of life in balance with the light. Her fifth and most recent album, the quieter and more reflective Broken Politics, was released in 2018. When asked why she chose that title for the album, she said, Mainstream politics are pretty broken. I don't see that there's a lot being done for the cause of humanity, for love, or for any good reasons. Broken politics, I guess, is a summary of how I feel too many things have been run around us. As much as anybody else, I don't know what the answers are. In 2020, Universal Music Group put out a deluxe reissue of Raw Like Sushi. It includes a remaster of the original LP, plus two bonus discs packed with rare remixes. Nena's latest undertaking is The Black Trans Project, a peer-led grassroots project whose objectives are to support and improve the well-being of the Black transgender community. The organization dropped a mixtape titled The Gift in April 2021. They hope to raise enough funds to further support Black trans performers, musicians, and artists. Thanks for watching. Please like, share, and comment. Also, don't forget to subscribe and turn on your notifications so you won't miss any future videos. See you next time!